So if we could go back 10, 20 years, I'm sure most people would jump at the chance to invest in property. But I hear in the comments, mm. video after video, is now a good time to invest in property? So today, we're going to talk about that. Okay, let's get into it. So then, um, money doesn't grow on trees, but in property, it's fair to say pretty that much it pretty much does, hey? Um, it grows in houses. It grows yeah. in houses, yeah. Uh, property's been very good to me. I'm a landlord, I've been a landlord for 20 years, and I would do nothing different. Mm. Uh, no stocks, no shares, uh, same thing, stocks and shares. Uh, no uh, Bitcoin. Yeah. Um, so there's a really interesting thing you said before. I'm all in. Um, 20 years ago, right? Mm. 16 years ago, there was a financial crash mm -hmm. and lots of people weren't buying at that time. Mm. But if you could go back to 2008 now, you would buy because the house prices then are so much cheaper than what they are now. Well, I was yeah. and I did. You were, I was yeah. buying just before the crash. I was buying all through the crash, cheaper prices it's through. Like, I was buying just after the crash. There's always periods of uncertainty mm. in anything and people stop doing stuff. But it's the brave one, the risk takers that just yeah. carry on, right? Mm -hmm. So... Is now the right time to invest in property as a question? It's like saying, is now mm. the right time to plant a tree? Yeah. So what's the best time to I told plant you, a tree? I saw a quote from our friend John the other day. He yeah, put something out yeah. there and it was, Hi, John. generational wealth was started by oh, one, one risk taker. taker. Yeah, yeah. Um, I like the, that. The truth is the <clears throat> ideal time to plant the tree was 20 years ago. But the second best time is, is now, now, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Of course it is. Exactly. So, um, yeah, if we could go back. 10, 20 years, brilliant, but yeah, hindsight's so a wonderful basically, if thing. If you look at house prices throughout history, there's never been a 10 year period where they haven't gone up in value, right? Mm -hmm. um, so what drives up house prices? What, yeah. what are the key factors? Let, let's talk about why and how yeah. and, uh, and, and get into it. So there are two things that mainly yeah, two drive- Two key things. Two key yeah. things. Uh, one is inflation. Yeah. Um, prices go up, always have. Um, for all sorts of different reasons, and we'll, we'll start listing them off. Um, the uh, fad for families isn't going away. No. People need somewhere to live. If you look at the, uh, the list of things you need in your life, shelter's number two, you know, food and water, yeah. shelter is, is up there. Um, so people need somewhere to live and prices go up. Think of you know, inflation like a car, you know, the, it, it, if you press the accelerator, things go faster. So inflation can go faster, it can go slow, but it's always there. Mm -hmm. uh, in a recession, it can go backwards, uh, but we know that recessions, generally speaking, don't last for long mm -hmm. periods of time. Um, of course, things can go backwards, but generally speaking, uh, since records began in 1952, house prices have gone up and... I'm, I, I, would, I would bet my bottom dollar that they will continue exactly. to go up. Of course, there will be periods when they might be stagnant or going backwards. Um, but in, if you pick your area right, and we'll come on to some of these, these, these points, even in times when prices are going down, property prices, general prices, there are areas where property prices are going yeah. up. Yeah. You, you know that as a, exactly. as, as a fact, you've, you've seen it. So, so the other thing that drives up property values, the same thing that drives up the price of anything really, supply and demand. Mm -hmm. Um, in the UK, only about 6% of the land is available to build on, mm -hmm. and we're only building on 3% of it. Yeah. Um, more um, people are renting, they're renting for longer, average age of the first time buyers going up. Sure. So it's a pressure cooker, you know, they're not making any more land in the UK. Um, it's not true of every country in the world, mm -hmm. you know, um, some populations are declining, some uh, countries are vast, but in the UK, property prices go up. And they do. And then we also have a culture in this country where we want to live in a house more than in other, con they, other countries. There. They live in flats more than we do. Um, and I just think there is a housing shortage. They Labour pledged to build. They're not talking about building flat. They're talking about building houses, aren't they? And then people don't want houses being built near them. So there's, just, there's a housing shortage. The NIMBYs, the and, NIMBYs. Yeah. And so if you, supply and demand is playing a role in house prices going up and rents going up too. So if you stick all that together, you've got a recipe for ever increasing um, house prices. And we've seen that mm. play out over over the decades. So there's, there's a third thing. I was about to say, yeah? just looking at this mm. notes, yeah. Mm. Go on. Well, leverage. Yeah. Um, we, we, we're going to talk a bit more about leverage, but I think that as, because it, it's, 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 
very, very powerful. We'll talk about it in the, in the next sort of section as well. But th over the years, more finance has been available more mm -hmm. readily to more people, and that definitely impacts. Um, yeah, there's new buy to let lenders all the time coming into the market. Yeah, yeah. So look, yeah, totally. le le leverage is a big part of it. That's one of the reasons that prices have gone up. And it's also when the financial crash hit in 2008, that was the first time that um, finance markets had contracted that quickly mm. by that amount. And that's why we had such a big shock. Um, so things can go up, things can go down, um, things are temporary, fast, slow, but generally yeah. over, if you take the long view as a property investor, you should. Prices are generally on an upward trend. So you might have heard lots of pessimistic uh, predictions, news about the death of buy-to-let investing. Um, those warnings have been around for years. If you, you can go back and listen to oh, yeah. things that sound like you know, headlines, articles, um, economists saying, um, one thing now, they've said the same thing 10 years ago, not the same economists, but economists 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago. There's always been warnings. There's always somebody that's being pessimistic. I think the, the noise is quite loud at the moment, but for some key reasons, property investing is absolutely the bedrock, the, mm -hmm. the base of what I do. And I think it, it, if you get it straight in your mind about how it works, what it does do, what it doesn't do, take a long view, it can really work out for you for the long term. Um, so as an investor, I think there are three things that you really need to get clear on and they'll give you the confidence and the, the, the clarity and the, the certainty just, to, just yeah. to do it. Like you say, intergenerational wealth starts with one yeah. risk taker. And if you understand all the risks, Actually, you de-risk it, don't you? Of course you do. So let's yeah. talk. Let's talk about the, th on, the so, three things. So the three things. The first one: investing in the right area. Number one. Yeah, you've got to <clears> invest <throat> in the right area. So if you're investing in London and overpaying, that's the wrong area. If you're investing in, we, mm. we did a video last week, didn't we? Uh, uh, Scotland, wrong area. Mm -hmm. If you're investing overseas, the wrong area. You're investing in even yeah. the right place, but in the wrong area, in the wrong street, the wrong like street yeah. or in the wrong type of property. Yeah. So. It's crucial to look at what's happening in the local market, what's regenerating, what's gen gentrifying, sure. uh, what the what the local market's doing. Um, you want to be in the right region, the right town or city, on the right street, and right buying the right mm -hmm. type of property. Um, yes. So look up, look look for um, the that right, right spot, area. and yeah. that can make a massive difference. You buy the wrong in, in the wrong in the wrong then yeah. you might Problems. languish at no capital growth for years, no mm -hmm. rental growth for years, but if you buy the right area, then yep. you, everything aligns okay. and you work. So find the right so, area. So the second thing? Uh, second thing I still think is leverage. leverage Coming yeah. on to leverage. So why is property so good? It's the ability to leverage. Um, the stocks and shares analogy is always mm -hmm. a good one for me. Um, if you have 100,000 pounds and you put it into stocks and shares and the market moves 10%, you made 10 grand. If you have a 100,000 pound house, and you've only got £20,000 in it, then when that market moves 10%, you've still made the same amount, you've yeah. still made the £10,000, but you've made it versus your deposit, which was only, let's say, 20%. Yeah. I know you might say, I should be buying with a 30% deposit or a 50% deposit, but the idea of putting leverage in, it's massive, yeah. it's huge. I had a conversation with my accountant, I remember it quite clearly, a couple of years ago, because I don't have a pension, I do not have a traditional pension, and um, i quite young, dove straight into property, and I, I didn't really second guess myself or check myself, probably until my mid-30s or 40s. I, am I definitely doing the right thing here? It felt like I was doing the right thing, but I know everybody else has got a pension and I'd made a bit of money elsewhere, and you know, it's like, should I just double check with the, the accountant? Should I be getting a pension? And he just looked at me gone out and said, no, no, you definitely, definitely be doing it right, because you can't yeah. leverage, you've got all of this extra totally. on that. You, you'd be taking a backward step if you wanted to go and buy stocks and shares mm. and pensions. So, this is not what we're doing. So yeah, okay, I get it, I so, get it. Yep. That leads us into the next one. So you found the right area, mm. you've leveraged it. Yeah. The third thing to make sure everything works is? It, it's, it's choosing the right, um, say it's the right tenants, the right management strategy. So mm -hmm. right house in the right area, pay the right price, but manage, leverage it, but manage it right. Yeah. You know, you can come unstuck. If you throw any old tenant in there, the wrong paperwork, totally. you aren't compliant. Yeah. And this is where landlords, um, and this is where some of the noise comes from, mm -hmm get really frustrated, get very down because they get fines and penalties and 
you know, the, the numbers they thought that were going to come out of the back end of this whole thing, the profit mm -hmm. uh, doesn't materialize or gets eaten up in, in costs that they didn't anticipate. Totally. So uh, right tenant, give, make sure everything's wrapped up in the right paperwork. You can't skimp, you can't, you can't backdate this stuff. You know, um, yeah, true. you hear some nightmares about, I didn't, I didn't do X, Y, and Z, didn't register the deposit, <laughs> didn't um, put the share on right, didn't do the right referencing, whatever. And then you get a rent repayment order or the council on you or the yeah. tenant doesn't pay and you, you, you enter. All of these things can be dealt with really, really easily. Um, big institutional investors, professionals, don't have these problems. As a landlord, exactly. most landlords have got one or two houses and they don't do things professionally. Get a letting agency, do everything professionally, it mm. should just run well, it'll run a lot more smoothly. It leads me into a shameless plug. Oh, go on then. If you want to talk to me about any of these things we've spoken about today, finding the right house in the right area, managing that house, mortgages, you name it, follow the link in the description. There's a, a link there to my calendar. You can book a call at Time Suits You and um, we can have a chat, Zoom or on the phone. Yeah, I mean, so. Fact finder, no obligation. Oh, yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, Adam is UK's number one property sourcer, so we can find houses. We're a letting agent, and putting those two things together is unusual and it's really important. Yeah. You know, if we find a house and we make it compliant, whatever renovation tart up that's needed, and then manage it for the long term for the next 10, 20, 30 mm -hmm. years, that's the kind of partner you want. So Indeed. That's what we can do. All so right. uh, that's that's it for today. Hopefully, we've we'll shed a bit of light on it. Money really does grow on trees if you're talking about being a yeah, buy to let investor. Thanks for listening. All Please right. like and subscribe. It really helps us. And uh, we hope you enjoyed. Thank you. Bye for now.